The African American Legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as politics, sports, aviation, business, literature, and education. We will explore how African Americans have succeeded in areas where they've been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and with us today is Della Britton by the president and CEO of the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Hi, Della. Hi, Roscoe. How are you? The JRF Foundation, one of the great success stories of scholarship programs in America, minority students, mainly African American, 1,400 graduates, about 270 present scholars. What do you account for your success? Why is this program so successful? Well, you know, I'll throw in a plug here and tell you that the New York Times described us about a year ago as maybe, quote, maybe one of the best educational efforts in the country. And taken out of context, maybe. well, I think one of <laughs> exactly. I mean, in our minds, absolutely. And, but 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 I, but but taken out of context, um, you know, I think what drove that reporter to that conclusion was our realization, um, and and the fact that we start from the premise that. Closing the achievement gap in education, whether it's in lower level educational uh, uh, context or on, on a higher educational level, is no easy fix. Um, you really do have to put in uh, the time to understand the challenges that minority students face, um, particularly on college campuses today, which are, you know, really bastions of stress for young people. They're well, tell, tell, crowded. Tell me They're... about that, because at one time when I went to college, you were about the only one or two or three yeah. blacks on campus. Now there are hundreds on campus. Why is it so challenging for African American students today as against yeah. yesterday? And, and, and a lot of things haven't changed. And I'll, I'll put myself in the generation after yours. Um, when I went in the 70s to college, I was one of the early classes to integrate the large universities. I went to an Ivy League institution. And, and I remember feeling um, somewhat marginalized. I remember feeling um, and, and questioning whether I really belong there and, and worrying about the uh, pronouncements of uh, affirmative action and the taint that affirmative action had in those days. And, and that rocks your confidence. That 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 really um, infringes on your ability to to be your true self and to do as well as you can. And I would say that today, college students have all of those challenges that we had as sort of pioneers or early integrationists, if you will, on on, on large uh, college campuses. And then that you know their culture generally for minority, non-minority um, students and young people today, um, we see has created such a level of stress. You know this wonderful technology where everyone is constantly in touch with each other, um, you know is great in some ways, but it also um, puts young people, um, you know, in a situation where they are constantly on. Um, they need to be able to practice downtime. They need to be able to practice, um, you know, how to, you know, how to balance, um, you know, the challenges of communicating constantly with um, making sure you take care of your number one priorities in your life with studying. I mean, you sign on the internet, and, and the students tell us, you know, you spend two or three hours surfing the web before you start your work and before you start taking care of business. So, you know, the, the technology era, I think, has been a factor. Uh, that's increased the level of stress and the challenges that young people have to manage. Um, I must tell you, Roscoe, the the issues of race are still very present, especially you know on your program. I know that's one of the issues that you um, you know you constantly put forth to to talk about and dissect. And um, and I can tell you that the uh, young minority students are still navigating social issues such as racism and intolerance and. And, and, and that continues to be one of the things that's even more difficult to deal with since it is much more subtle um, um, sometimes. Um, it's probably even more disturbing when it's not so subtle because uh, we still have students that are giving us feedback that there are, um, that there's a backlash on campuses. So, you know, there's a panoply of sort of social issues as well as the ones you would expect at that point in a young person's life when they are trying to um, you know, get to that next level of education. Yeah, most of the students now, African American minority students, go to predominantly white or integrated colleges, but there's still about 20 percent to go to historically black colleges. Mm -hmm. Do you think those students at the historical black colleges face the same stresses as those at integrated colleges? 
You know, the answer to that is not a short one, but I will tell you my take on it. Um, I think they have different challenges. Uh, they may not have the issues uh, surrounding social integration, um, racial integration, if you will, socioeconomic integration. Um, but as you know, a lot of our HBCUs, our historically black colleges and universities, are struggling financially. Um, so there are issues of whether they have the same resources that their counterparts um, in, in, in other integrated universities have, um, especially the large universities, um, the Ivies, if you will. Um, they, they, I think they face challenges of um, the, the, the whole set of stereotypes surrounding um, someone who has gone to a segregated school, uh, whether corporate America uh, trusts that they have had the right experience level, uh, had right the experience and they've had the higher um, uh, level of education that students who have gone to other schools. So I, I think the challenges are different. Um, you know, I won't try to quantify whether they're, you know, greater or, or less than other students. I just think college students today are, are, are wrestling with a lot of interesting, you know, the, the issues of sexuality on campus um, are, are, I think, much more complicated mm -hmm. than they were uh, when we were in school. I mean, that's been around for, of course, <laughs> for centuries, but, but there are sort of different issues of sexuality and, and, and um, you know, their gender um, uh, discrimination issues that, that students are dealing with. So without going, you know, too far down that road to, to explain those challenges, we're seeing it all. And what's, what's nice about our program is, uh, that we bring students in their freshman year once they're selected to become Jackie Robinson Foundation Scholars, as we dub them, and we're with them for four years and sometimes beyond because, as you know, Roscoe, we started a graduate school component several years ago. So some of these young people we've had in the fold, you know, in the family, like if family. you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so we are able to not only watch their development but, but, but shape their development and give them the support system that, um, number one, they may not be getting at home, and number two, that today's college student needs even more so. I mean, I, I think college guidance counselors are... Um, uh, you know, inundated with, with all kinds of issues, I think, because of the growth in the population on college campuses now. Um, college campuses aren't as hands-on with some of the subsidiary, subsidiary issues that young people face. So we are able to provide a support system that is clearly invaluable, as you know, results in a nearly 100% graduation rate um, that our students have maintained, uh, contrasted with a 47, uh, actually now a 40.5% graduation rate for African Americans. Americans at a 47 percent graduation rate for Hispanic Americans. And I have to tell you that those numbers um, with regard to the African American community, Roscoe, are going backwards. When I started at the foundation seven years ago, the graduation rate for African Americans in this country from college was about 46 percent. 46.4, I think, is what Education Trust um, had listed in that year of 2004. This raises now it's 40.5 percent. So the number's going backwards. So the but question this is why. The question that's yeah. coming up more and more in the media: Does everybody need to go to college? Does everybody need to go, graduate from college? And what do you do if you graduate with $100,000 worth of debt? There's so much so that on the internet, there's jobs you can get to make $100,000 without having a college degree. So Absolutely. that factors into these diminishing graduation rates, and it turns out the males graduate at a lower rate than females mm -hmm. from college. Mm -hmm. What does this say That's not about the whole story, our though. society? Well, but it's not the whole story either, because, um, and, and this again, I'm, I, I hate to say it, and it's the same, you know, same thing we know at the foundation. These issues are not easy; they're complicated. Mm -hmm. And and on the financial point, sure, that's a factor, Roscoe. But the reality is, more money is being put um, into college scholarships now than ever before in the history of this country mm -hmm. um, through the Pell grants. And as you know, our current president has increased, um, in fact, almost doubled. He's probably going to be cutting back this year with the, you know, with the appropriations bills that are in trouble on the Hill now um, in the new Congress. But, um, but President Obama had, had almost doubled the number of dollars that the Pell Grants, which is the primary support um, for college scholarships in this country, aside from the scholarships that colleges and universities give. Private scholarships like the ones we give, the ones the Mellon Foundation gives, the Gates Foundation gives, everything other than the federal government combined with the state in some cases, and the colleges and universities themselves 
um, is, 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 um, comes from private sources and it's only 7% of the total scholarship money. So when you talk about monies available, you need to look at the federal government and what they're willing to do and the colleges and universities. So at a time when, at least for minority students, there's even more money available for scholarships. If you can get into college and you're smart enough, we won't talk about jobs right now, but <laughs> if, if you have shown the, the grade point um, 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 averages, if you've shown the propensity to be a good solid student and if you're college ready, or college bound, let's say, because that's a whole nother subject. Um, the money is there. I will venture to say, I'll go out on a limb here, and, and the money is there. I'm not saying each individual family doesn't have their own challenges with meeting the financial aid guidelines that FAFSA sets up, um, but why is the rate going backwards at such a rate, the graduation rate, when there's more money available? Colleges and university administrators are telling us that they're better at making the decisions than they ever were in terms of deciding what students are gonna make it and not make it. And so why are they, and, I, and I, do, I, I do concede that part of it is when students get into college, they face challenges at home. The mother says, you know, come home, you need to help me work. Um, you need to work and help me with finances. So there are some financial parts to it. But that's not the whole story. And I'd venture to say, given our experience at the foundation, that's not the main issue. That the main issue is, a, is an issue of, 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 you know, the social interaction issue the self-esteem issue, which is still very much a, a glaring um, um, factor that comes up in our research and our focus groups with our students, that there is still a sense that they're not, they're not being integrated into their environments um, as well as they could be. What about their understanding of purpose? Do many of these students understand why they're going to college other than the fact that somebody paid their way is, what I, about well, purpose, dedication? I think, it's, I think it, maybe not purpose so much. I think, you know, certainly kids are smart enough to get that. But direction and, and guidance once they get, once they get there. Um, you know, the, the, the breadth of professional disciplines now. You know, hear all these kids talk about a double major and a triple major. Um, it's become very complicated to choose, you know, your major field of study now. So one of the other issues we're seeing is students aren't getting enough guidance to, to help them figure out a career path and even, you know, even a, a curriculum path. Um, you know, the STEM students, the, you know, the science, technology, engineering, and math students, um, the pre-med students pretty much know when they start college that they're kind of going on that track. And about 30% of our students are STEM students. You know, those are the ones you sort of see have clear direction and, you know, other than, you know, some of the academic challenges they're having, which we also help them through um, in our mentoring program, um, they kind of know where they're going. There's that whole field, though, about two-thirds of, of the students that we deal with, and we think they're representative, mm -hmm. um, are challenged with finding, um, you know, you know, finding a career path. You know, if you don't go to law school, what do you do? You know, there's this whole area of, of um, you know, the social sciences uh, that kids have trouble navigating. The colleges aren't equipped, I don't think, to do that. Now, you mentioned something about whether all students should, you know, should go to college. There's an increased thinking, as you know, in the educational um, um, journal world, if you will, um, that two-year colleges maybe are more appropriate for some students, that this notion that every student more and more, the badge has become every student should go to college, every student who can read and write should be college bound, where we need to invest in the technical schools, in the trade schools, in the two-year colleges. As you know, President Obama has been giving that a lot of attention and talking about beefing up that. Um, but we as a society then need to embrace that concept and make it just as valued to be a tradesperson, to make it just as much a value. You know, I paid a plumber the other day $300 for about six minutes of work. <laughs> I don't have many lawyer friends uh, who, who um, you know, get $300 for six minutes. I, I'm oversimplifying that, of course. But, but, you know, we need to value all elements of our society. Um, and, and I think that's something that, um, you know, also figures into uh, challenges, that students sort of feel this, you know, compulsion to, to get through four-year college. And maybe you're right. Some should not be. Uh, counsel to do that, but the kids that we have in our program are clearly right. top, you know, four-year track, you know, college graduate uh, um, material. Well, let's talk about what you do on the networking weekend, where you bring all these students together in New York City once a year. Uh, what happens at the network weekend, and why is that probably one of the pivotal activities of the Jackie Robinson Foundation? 
Well, that's, you know, we've recently dubbed our networking weekend. I don't know if you, you, you know, as I say, you missed the memo. We now call that the Mentoring and Leadership Conference because it was a misnomer. First of all, it's four days. It's four and a half days. It's not just a weekend. So we wanted to sort of communicate that sort of temporal aspect. Yeah, who pays for that, by but, the way? Um, well, we do. We, we, of course, do in our, our, you know, our fundraising, our, our um, you know, our, uh, our foundation funds go to that. But, but yes, this four and a half days when we bring the hundreds of students from around the country into New York City to um, have our largest um, engagement with them is is the sort of touchstone and the pivotal part of our program. I do want to mention, though, Roscoe, that we continue to mentor them throughout the year with our eight regional committees around the country. So this isn't just a four and a half day touch and then, you know, you're sort of on your own, see you next year. We're, again, because of the technology, mm -hmm. um, we're constantly in touch with them. We do podcasts to them, um, which is our own little broadcast station. So we are, and we have these committees on the ground who keep in touch with them. We have a best practices manual that says once a month, every one of our students is going to get touched, either, you know, hopefully in person, but if not in person, certainly through a phone call and last resort, you know, an email or a tweet or a text saying, how are you? How'd that math test go? How are you doing? Um, but that four and a half day weekend gives us our, you know, our biggest um, um, ability to expose them to some 80 different professionals in different disciplines. You know, we have career panels where they can come and ask, you know, tough questions. Um, and we say to them, don't come and ask information. When you get, you know, uh, the U.S. attorney or, you know, a United States uh, uh, um, attorney to, uh, and, a, and, a, and a head of a civil rights, Mark Morial from the National Urban League was on one of our panels. You know, when you get people of that ilk in front of you, don't ask questions that you can get the answers to on the Internet. Don't ask, um, or, you know, bankers, don't ask how many employees does Goldman Sachs have. You want to ask, what's the culture at Goldman Sachs? What is an investment bank banker versus a merchant banker? You know, try to get, you know, a real sense of those things that you may not be able to get at home or through your own support system. So we have career panels. We also have a practical life um, skills um, aspect to our mentoring, which is, you know, teaching these bright, young, motivated people, um, you know, the sort of social elements that will boost their self-esteem. You know, um, public speaking, conflict resolution, uh, how to eat in a four-star restaurant, um, uh, you know, things that, you know, may throw them off their game if they're not familiar with an environment. Uh, we take them, during their four years with us, we take them to a cultural event during that weekend. One year it's a ballet, the next year it's a Broadway play, the next year it's jazz at Lincoln Center, and the next year it's an opera. So we're exposing them culturally. We take them to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Why do you visit museums? Because it broadens your horizons. It expands your sense of creativity. You know, we are trying to build out, you know, Renaissance people, you know, the full breadth of, you know, what a successful and indeed a leader, um, the skills a leader needs to have in his or her toolbox to do well. We think that's an aspect to um, um, this program that makes it, you know, so valuable and, and really makes us, I think, a distinctive um, uh, pool of, um, um, a distinctive resource to create a pool of future minority leaders. We well, want to create the next, you know, leaders, the next. Well, you select from, what, five or 7,000 students? We get about, well, well, we now, we've, we've been able to fine tune that a little bit. Um, we're completely online in our application process, just as, you know, major universities and colleges are. So we, we've what, gotten about website? three to 5,000. What's your website? www.jackierobinson.org. Mm -hmm. And we get about, last year we got about 4,000. We saw the numbers go up last year because of the economy of applications, because, you know, again, as you as 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 I want to make clear, we not only give very generous four-year financial awards to our students, but we have this sh this whole sort of shoring up system of mentoring. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to mention too on your program, Roscoe, that we're now placing about 65 percent of our uh, Jackie Robinson scholars and internships, and in this mm -hmm. job market, that's in, you know become a more and more uh, vital part of our. Um, our program because students, once they get into these internships, improve themselves, again, with our help and our guidance, um, very often, in fact, in most cases, they result in permanent offers of, of employment. So that's a big part of our program. Um, we also have a, um, I'm very proud of this uh, thing we've called the family sessions over the years. And you know well that those are sessions where we break into small groups and we allow students to download um, some of the emotional um, aspects, these, some of these social aspects, and that's where a lot of this comes out, where they say to us they do feel marginalized on campuses. Um, 
um, they, they are still feeling like they are not, um, you know, quite, you know, part of their environments. And so we give them strategies for how to do that. We say, you know, read the bulletin boards, join clubs, go beyond your comfort zone, and don't just self-segregate and only associate with the black students. You know, make sure you get to know um, students from all walks of life. You've been, you've been given this wonderful opportunity to, to, to uh, be around other smart young people who are going to be running the world with you. Um, get to know them. So this is a, you know, again, there's no quick fix. This is a comprehensive program. Um, you know, we're at a point now, Roscoe, where we are trying to, uh, coming upon 40 years um, doing this. The, the Jackie Robinson Foundation is now poised to codify what we've learned, and I think we're uniquely positioned because we are an organization with people like me who know what these students are going through, because I went through it 30-odd years ago when I was in college. Um, we're uniquely poised to take what we've learned, to codify these strategies for success, and make them more broadly available to minority students uh, who are not Jackie Robinson scholars. So we can only take a few hundred students um, and bring them into the fold and give them this hands-on mentoring. But what we want to do is take as much of what we know has helped these students, put it online, um, you know, stream, which is, you know, and broadcast, if you will, um, our seminars that happen during that four and a half um, day um, conference every year and, and, and put it out on the internet so that other minority students so and other college campuses. So someone, this is a whole new part of our program that we're excited about and we need funding for. So if someone <laughs> wanted to see one of these podcasts, they would go to your website and you have them on the website. Well, they, right you now? have to have a code. You have to have, you can't just, you know, you, you have to How do you to get be, the code? Well, you either are Jackie Robinson Scholar or you become part of this new program. Um, How do you which do is, that? Is, is, well, you sign on. I mean, you can sign up. We will be liberal about letting, you know, students on. But we have to, you know, they tell me, the techies tell me that, you know, you do have to, you know, do some crowd control. You can't have everybody, yeah. you know, sort of come on. So we need to be a little bit strategic. Um, and, and, and orderly about how we roll out this, this uh, internet component um, of ours. And, and there's some really innovative ideas circling around the office as to how we're going to do that, which I'm told I can't divulge until they, they put it on paper. But anybody who wants to get involved, they contact the foundation? Absolutely. Go to www.jackierobinson.org. You'll get our contact information. Call us. Um, we're always looking for professional mentors. We're collecting a database of professionals that we can call on again. And through our online service, we can do mentoring online by having the people like you, whom we have identified as good, solid professionals with a good sense of values, um, and allow our students to interact with you in a way that protects you, mm -hmm. your identity and your time, but that gives our students access to people of your caliber. So we're doing some new exciting programs too, and, and, and I'm just, um, needless to say, I'm, uh, the board's gonna have to wheel me out in a wheelchair since I'm, I'm, I've got a lot that I'd like to try to do before well, I clearly, retire. <laughs> Della Britton Baeza, you've done a great job as a CEO, oh. but the foundation was really founded by Jackie's wife, widow, Rachel Robinson. Yep. What role does Rachel and the Robinson family still have in the foundation? Well, she, you know, of course, they're all still, uh, Rachel and her two children are, are still on our board, as you know. Um, Rachel has a nice office at the foundation, our new headquarters, um, and is still very much of a guiding light um, to me personally, Roscoe. I mean, she is a, um, for those who don't know, this is a woman who not only finished UCLA, but has a master's degree in psychiatric nursing, a well, not only well-educated, but of course, the epitome of, of, of grace and, and and, and, and vision. I mean, you know, when she started this organization 39 years ago, it was her vision that it wasn't enough to just give financial assistance to um, minority students, you know, black uh, students at the time, which was their focus, um, but that, that we had to give them these strategies for success. We had to get them through college. Mm -hmm. um, we had to give them the support system, especially as these universities were becoming more and more integrated. It was the 70s when she started it, which was when I, when I was in college. And, um, you know, we were a little fish out of water. You know, we were thrown onto these campuses coming from, in my case, a, a, a public school in Pittsburgh, a good public school, but, you know, not a fancy prep school where other people at my Ivy League school had gone to. Um, you know, had attended where other uh, had uh, had gone, and and she realized that it was more than money. We said, okay, we can get them in there, but then we have to get them out. And how do we do that? And she literally took the early scholars um, under her wing. She put together a, a top-notch board, the likes of you, mm -hmm. um, you know, Franklin Williams. You remember Frank him? Williams. What a dear, dear, wonderful, brilliant man. Um, her brother, who was uh, also a Tuskegee Airman, mm -hmm. um, her um, her brother sure. Charles. Um, and, you know, and a, and a group of, and, and, and Marty Adam, of course, who's still on our board, a prominent New York lawyer, and she put together a strong board with this vision that 
We want to get students into college, but importantly, we want to get them out. And that's our mantra today, which is it's not enough to give money. We have to also give strategies to, to, to allow her, them to her, her new vision is the Jackie Robinson Museum. Oh, her new Tell love. Tell us yeah, about Her new that. love. Yes. In fact, when I came on board seven years ago, the board's mandate to me was, you know, we're thinking about this museum. What do you, you know, should we move forward? Should it just be a small exhibition space? Should it be a museum with a capital M? Um, and Rachel, at, um, and, and she's, she doesn't mind our saying that she's 89 years old because, of course, when you see her, and I don't blame her because when you see her, she, she looks like my contemporary and, and acts like it. And, but, yes, we, this is our latest project, building the Jackie Robinson Museum in Lower Manhattan um, um, at the intersection of Varick and Canal right there at the Holland Tunnel. And uh, Rachel's very excited about the concept not only of memorializing Jackie Robinson, who is um, certainly worthy of memorialization, but um, she wants to make sure this is a vibrant, you know, place where um, these social issues of our time are discussed, um, issues that we are still wrestling with as a society. Uh, she wants to make sure it is accessible to um, people of all ages, um, um, older people who want to come and, 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 and reminisce, but also she wants to be sure younger people come and when they leave there, they're challenged to go and be better citizens, mm -hmm. um, to embody the values that Jackie himself um, uh, personified, values like integrity and discipline and tolerance and respect for others and community service. So um, this is very much uh, a museum, not only a tribute to Jackie, but it will be the only civil rights museum in New York City, by the way. Mm -hmm. The home of Lady Liberty has no other civil rights museum mm -hmm. um, because it will be Jackie's life interwoven among other African-American pioneers of our century. So it will, it will touch um, all of those heroes who have built um, um, uh, this help build this country uh, and make us a more diverse population. How's the fundraising going? Fundraising's going, believe it or not, in this in this market, um, you know, it's bouncing back as well. We're um, the goal to build the actual museum is 25 million. Um, we're trying to extend that and you know exceed that that goal. Um, obviously, to put more money into our endowment, but um, we're at about 13 and a half million, almost 14 million. So um, we haven't announced it publicly yet. We're still doing what they call the, you know, the um, the private. Uh, um, um, aspect of the campaign where we're raising the you know the seven six and seven figure gifts but we're about to um, by the end of the summer we'll announce the public phase and um, hopefully get there pretty fast and start um, start construction um, in about a year or so and with the leadership of Della Britton Baeza the president and CEO of Jackie Robinson Foundation we know it's going to happen we know the programs are going to develop and we're very appreciative that Della and the foundation are doing what they're doing for minority students Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Roscoe. Okay.